Hello everybody, Chaplain Bob here, Light of the World Ministries. Listen, there's a lot of stuff going on about trying to get rid of Paul as an apostle. Matter of fact, there are people out there that'll tell you that, nope, it's not Paul. He's not the 12th apostle that replaced Judas Iscariot, you know, the one that betrayed Christ. But they say it's Matthias. All right, let's take a look and see how that holds up. Uh, let's see. All right, so in Acts chapter 1, we read in verse 23. Uh, well, let's go. Let's go back a little bit. Let's go to verse 15. Acts chapter 1 and verse 15. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. Men and brethren, the scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had ob obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. And falling headlong, headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. And it was known to all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in their proper tongue, Al-Soldama, Al that is to say, the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, Let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. Wherefore, of these men, which have companioned with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John unto that same day that he was taken up from us, must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they, the apostles, and they, not the Holy Ghost, and they appointed to... Joseph called Barsabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whither of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. Now, here's the deal. Jesus had picked 12 apostles and Judas hung himself. There were then only 11. In John 6:70, Jesus answered them, Have not I chosen you 12, and one of you is a devil? Now, I, find, I, uh, I fail to find in Scripture where the Lord told the apostles to find a replacement for Judas as recorded here in Acts, in the book of Acts. Okay? So, did the Lord tell them to do this? No. They did this on their own. Now, I'm sure that both of these men that they were considering to be an apostle were faithful in the eyes of the eleven apostles. But still, the Lord did not command them to do this thing. Now, Saul, who became Paul, however, that was a totally different story. So let's take a look at that. Acts chapter 9 and verse 1. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogues, that if he found any of this way, the way of Christ, right? Whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about, round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, 
Why persecutest thou me? And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Yeshua HaMashiach? No. And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembled and astonished, said, Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. And the men which journeyed with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. You would hope those men, when they heard the story of Paul, would have gotten saved, but I don't read that anywhere in the Bible, so... And verse 8, And Saul arose from the earth, and when his eyes were opened, he saw no man, but they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. Now, isn't that interesting? Three days. Wasn't Jesus three days and three nights in the heart of the earth? Oh, yeah. Verse 10, And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias, and to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias, and he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth, and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And, there, uh, and here he hath authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel. Did you catch that? But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he... Paul, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake." Verse 17, And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hand on him, said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me, that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. And straightway he preached Christ. He preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. And all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem and came thither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this is very Christ. Wow. So, so uh, Saul, who became Paul, was chosen of the Lord himself. In Acts 13.2, we read, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. I have had people deny Paul as an apostle, and in doing so they must deny the book of Acts, and they also have to deny the book of Second Peter, which confirms Paul as a brother in Christ. This is usually those who claim to be into Hebrew roots. I find it interesting that Paul, who was a learned scholar and was sent to the unlearned circumcised Gentiles, and yet Peter, who was an unlearned fisherman, was sent to the learned Jews who knew 
the scriptures, even though they were blind and couldn't see them and understand them. But uh, let's take a look at Second Peter's real quick. Second Peter, real quick. In Second Peter three and verse fifteen, what do we read? An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them of these things, in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest or wrestle, and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction, which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction. Paul haters not only have to deny the book of Acts, they also have to deny that the Holy Spirit failed to warn the 11 apostles that Paul was a fake, but they also have to deny 2 Peter. So, we read in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 27, But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And I must say that these things humble me greatly. All glory to the Lord. And like I said, I find it interesting that Paul, who was a learned scholar, was sent to the unlearned, uncircumcised Gentiles. And yet Peter, a mere fisherman, was sent to the scholarly Jews who knew the scriptures. So, God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confine, confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. All glory to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In his precious name, amen.